Hello and welcome to this section of the Calculus Derivative Help Tutor. And in this section we're going to conquer the famous chain rule from calculus. Uh, it's basically another rule of differentiation that lets you uh, take a derivative of more complicated functions. Don't forget what we're doing here folks. All we're doing in this class, in this section, in this series of lectures, is teaching you how to take derivatives of more and more complicated functions. At first we started out with a simple uh, constant, right? Derivative of a constant is zero. Then we talked about simple polynomials. When you have terms added together, you take the derivative of each of those terms. If they have x to the power of some number, we learned how to take the derivative of that. Then we learned how to take the derivative of two functions, you know, that were multiplied together, like x times, you know, square root of x, maybe or something of that nature, or x times the sine of x. We learn how to take derivatives of the trigonometric functions like sine and cosine and cotangent. We also learned how to take the derivative of when you have two things divided by one another. That's called the quotient rule. When you have something on top of a fraction and another function on the bottom of the fraction. So we've been building the complexity of the functions. But in all of these cases, all we're doing is calculating this derivative, which is simply another function that describes the slope of the original function at every point, which is the slope of the line tangent to the original function at every single point. So don't get too wrapped up in, oh my gosh, it's so hard. It's just that we're going to get into more and more complicated functions, and so we have to have additional tools in our tool bag to do that. So we've learned how to do uh, product rule, quotient rule, addition rule, constants, and all these other things. Now what we're going to do is learn, use, learn how to use the chain rule, which is strictly applied when you have one function nested inside of another function. That is what it is for. You can read your calculus book all day long, right? But it usually won't tell you in quite so few words what I've just explained to you. The chain rule is really used when you have one function and another function nested inside of that function. That is when you use the chain rule. We'll talk about in a minute why we call it the chain rule. What does a chain have to do with it? But basically it amounts to you have a box here that's a function. Inside that function is another function. So it's like you can kind of think of like pulling on links of a chain. One function is sort of connected to the other function. It is dependent on the other function. So to give you a concrete example of what I'm talking about, right, the function uh, f of x is equal to the sine of x squared. Now the this would be a function that you'll find out here in a few minutes. You have to use the chain rule to find it, okay? So we have the sine, and we know how to take the, the derivative of sine, that's cosine, right? And on the inside of the sine, we do not have x. We don't have just a straight x. We have something else. We have x squared. We know how to take the derivative of x squared. We learned that a long, long time ago. So you already know how to take the derivative of the sine function in general. But remember, if you go back to the trigonometric lesson, we were always learning how to take a derivative of sine of x, cosine of x, tangent of x, cotangent of x, secant of x. Nowhere ever in that lecture did I ever tell you it was okay just to apply that to anything other than x on the inside. What if I have sine of uh, square root of x on the inside? Well, that's different. What if I have sine of logarithm of x? We'll talk about those later, but that's different. What if I have sine of co cosine of x? Cosine of x being on the inside like this. Well, that changes the function, folks, and you can't just use uh, the, the general rule of taking trig derivatives in this case to figure that out. See, a lot of students will just say, well, the answer to this is cosine of x squared because I know that the, the derivative of sine is cosine, right? So